Hi, my name is Peter Fona. And I'm Tanya Kohler. And today we are talking about secrets to overcoming fears, anxieties, insecurity, and so on. And there is a reason why we have chosen this topic for today. So I don't know how many, how many months uh, are passed by since, since, this, uh, since Corona started uh, to influence our lives. And still, we, we can't see any end of this, of, this, uh, of this topic. And so secrets is still around, uh, anxiety is still around, insecurity is still around. And, and we have to handle that. And so we want to talk about these secrets, the secret, how you overcome this, all of this anxiety and so on. Tanya, tell me a bit more about that. Well, I think this is certainly a, uh, you know, a very timely topic given the world climate that we are in that's causing you know, great fear for many people. Um, and it's really the uncertainty that is causing majority of the fear. Um, you know, we love control. We love to know what's going on. And when we know what's to come, we have a level of comfort and security. I mean, security and safety is a, a, a staple in, um, you know, human needs. And when we don't have that security, we go into fear, anxiety. We feel insecure in the moment. And so insecurity, uh, or sorry, I should say uncertainty, uh, really is about the, the unknown. And what happens is that we, we always put these ideas of, of what if, what if, you know, and we, and we think of the worst case scenarios. And of course, if we're thinking about the worst case scenarios, that's going to create a lot of negative physiology in the body the emotions that we're feeling are going to be negative and that impacts the present moment in a, in a big way and in a detrimental way. So what we really want to do is gain control of the moment. You see, we always will forecast out, you know, into the future. So we feel as though we need to know what's going on tomorrow and then the next day and in a year and in two years and in five years and in 10 years and in 20 years. So we're, we're going so far into the future and we, we, we really feel like we're losing control because there is no guarantee of what's going to happen and we can't forecast that. But we feel comfortable when we think we know what's going to happen. And so the uncertainty right now is creating a lot of the stress and certainly as a global pandemic, that's going to create some fear. But what I always say is really important is to now start projecting just into the day. So never mind about tomorrow and then the next day and what's going to unfold from there. Take control of the situation in the present. Let's get present to the moment. And, and, and literally, it's just about being present right? About what's happening now. What energy do you want to put into this situation? So the thing is, is that we start to um, put all of these, these uh, fears into overdrive, right? So it's not about, it's never about what's happening in the moment, really, that's, that's causing all of these fears. It's either what we're thinking about in the future or what we're pulling up from the past. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a big one, the past. We go to the past, it's like, oh my gosh, well, this happened. Last time this happened. So now you're so fearful of the next steps because of what's happened in the past. So we become immobilized. So if we can just get present to the moment, you see, it's, it's such a game changer because when you take things from the past, um, you know, you're, 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 all of those negative things keep on coming up. So if you, you can never react in the present moment for what it is because you're holding on to all the baggage from the past that's going to create a lot of negativity. So think about a situation where you're having an argument with a partner or a friend or a boss or, or anything like that. You know, you're angry, you're upset, and you're usually not upset about just that moment. Whatever just happened in that moment is maybe not that fearful. It's not that big of a deal. But because you've taken all of those past experiences with you into this present moment, now that little thing has become a huge explosive thing. And we overreact. We send our system into overdrive, and we're now activating the sympathetic nervous system. 
And so we're in this fight or flight mode for something that is not a dangerous situation, but we've created it and, and exposed it to be a dangerous situation because of what we're feeling from the past or the fear of the future. So to override that, the best thing that you can do is to become very mindful and aware of the present situation and just take a look at the moment for what it is and not what it could be or what of, was in the past. Of course, because only that happened in the past, it doesn't mean that it has to, be, uh, it, it has to happen in the future as well. So the only moment we can change is the now. The now we are able to change. And what I'm going to do with you right now is I ask you to close your eyes. And now, think about one of the most wonderful moments in your life. And what can you see? How did you felt? Who was around you? Where was it? Sense it and enjoy this moment and be in that moment and be the moment and so take a deep breath and you can come back into the moment and you just created a wonderful moment it's such an easy game to play just to create a wonderful moment and the more you are in the awareness of now, when you are starting to live the moment, the now exactly, you are, you, will, you are creating for the future a wonderful past. Mm -hmm. And I love that just to make aware that you are the creator of all of that. And you are not the anxiety you're not the fear you are only the cre you are the creator of the situations and the more you are aware that you are creating these certain moments the more you can think it over what do you want to create for the future and please disconnect from the certain situation what's going on in the outside because you can have so much love you can have so much power in you and your mind can be incredibly active and you can use your imagination for 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 creating new new sit situations and the more you are in these certain situations and the more you get emotionally involved with all these situations guess what you will attract and achieve that and you won't care what's going on in the outside because you created your own moment and this own moment became something wonderful it became something wonderful by literally changing your physiology, by thinking of that moment that felt really good. So what you're doing is you're rewiring, you know, and helping to rewire the brain and the feeling, the physiology that comes along with that. So, so create that inner environment. You know, you are the architect of your life. You can create anything that you want. And it all starts with a feeling, with that emotion. So start thinking about some of those wonderful moments, whatever that may be for you. And even if you are experiencing, you know, extreme fear and anxiety and stress, you can override that by starting to think of the opposite, starting to think of what felt good. If you can't remember, who, you know, go to the past in that case to think of what felt really good for me. When did I feel my best? When did I feel empowered? You know, what is your favorite word? That's literally one of my favorite words. I love empowerment. I love to empower other people. I feel my best when I feel empowered. So I stand in my empowerment and it literally changed my physical body. So I'm changing my physiology. I'm standing strong. Put your shoulders up high, stand strong and solid, change your body. If we sit here like this, you know, we're going to feel like we're depressed. We're 
collapsing in on ourselves. Own your power, right? Change that vibration for yourself when you are feeling that anxiety and that fear and the stress and the tension. And I'm not saying that, you know, fear and anxiety, you know, doesn't feel real to you in that moment. Of course it does, right? But we can effectively change it because we don't want to create that moving forward. We don't want to take that with us everywhere we go. You know, experience it in the moment. And I, I want to say it's very important to experience your feelings. So you don't want to be in denial about your feelings. But there is a massive difference from experiencing your feelings in a moment, in that moment, or in a few moments, as opposed to staying there, living there, and letting that feeling control your entire life. Right, so we want to move past the negativity and really start to foster those good, beautiful feelings, even in those moments of high anxiety, tension, and fear. So try to get present to the moment so that now those little moments that happen in life don't create a fight or flight response. So if we look at our lives today, every day we have created a, a really high stress situation from very simple things because it's a pattern that we now have become used to that's, that's activating all the chemicals um, you know, in the body that is going to, again, activate the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight response. So we're, we're, we're creating this over non-life-threatening situations and you know it changes our physiology in the body and it's so detrimental to your health your emotional health as well so we really want to make sure that we can you know take control of those moments you know for what they are instead of overreacting you know that fight or flight response is there for a reason it's been a wonderful thing to help us you know throughout history but again it was really more for those those situations of extreme stress you know in the wild being chased by a saber-toothed tiger or what happened have you <laughs> but we now feel like we're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger every day when we don't get the kids to school on time or when we sleep in or when we forget to pick up the dry cleaning or we forget to take something out of the refrigerator for dinner you know all of these things that we create in our minds creates an overload of stress and we really need to start to deconstruct that and just see the situation for what it is in that moment so calm down take deep breaths and my most wonderful recipe for all of that is meditate. Just meditate. Tanya and I, we are so convinced about the huge success about meditation. And, and um, I myself, I meditate minimum three times a day for only 20 minutes. That's amazing. And, and the result is so incredible. And the more you are aware, that you are the creator of the situation, the more you can really create the situation and don't let the situation be created from the outside. Mm -hmm. Because as we still mention, the outside is, is full of anxiety, is full of fear and insecurity and so on and so on. Actually, we don't know what is true. We don't know what's not true. The best thing is, I don't watch television, I don't, I don't watch the news, I don't listen to the news at all, and I, do, I'm, I stay connected because I'm convinced when some, something important has to reach me, I will get it, mm -hmm. I will hear it. I'm so convinced about that so I can be very relaxed. That's a kind of mindset. We are creating our mindset and that gives me a more peaceful life, a more health, healthy life in that way. I have a wonderful deep sleep because I know I'm the creator of a lot of different things. And to go a bit, a bit deeper is, you know, we have the word surrender. And the more we live a life of surrender and let go and let it flow what the universe wants to have you to show you or what what and now i need some help because i don't know the word about that so to go deeper into or this to detail, reveal to you for example and that's it the more i let go the more wonderful things will happen when you are connected with the universe because when you're in a stress mode or when you want to keep control your body is 
is on a, such a high tension, um, the universe can't work through you. There is no chance. You're not able to sense what's going on instead of tension and stress and, and mm -hmm. fear and then anxiety. So the more you are relaxed, everything can flow to and through you. And you are connected with the whole universe. And I'm, I'm convinced the universe, what, what it's best for you. And also in meditation, you are connected with that and you're releasing incredibly a lot of stress and tension. But what I suggest to you, and I think Tanya can give you more, more advice. Well, you know, I certainly agree with you that meditation is a, is a beautiful thing. But I do recognize that people who are in high stress, high levels of anxiety find it extremely difficult to, you know, still the mind and come down to a meditative state. Uh -huh. So in those moments, the option, there's a couple of options. So you can, you know, go towards more of a mindfulness practice versus meditation. So where you're going to engage the, the senses and you're going to become aware of your surroundings, um, you know, and start to focus on something, whether it be a sound or something visual, uh, you know, that that's helpful. And, you know, again, and that still might be a little bit too much for somebody who is in, again, that high state of fight or flight mode, right? Um, so in those moments, simply just close your eyes for two minutes. That's it. No agenda. Don't worry about it. Doesn't matter what thoughts are going through your head. Simply close your eyes and just be in that moment. That's it for two minutes or for one minute. It doesn't matter. You know, something that I used to do many, many years ago um, was literally like as when I was driving. So when I was driving and I was at a stoplight, you know, I wouldn't close my eyes, but I would just. Sit <laughs> <laughs> so you want to make sure That's that you know you didn't miss the light, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't close your eyes. Not recommended while driving at any time, stoplight or not. Uh, but so, but just to be present in that moment. So I just focused around my surroundings. So that became more of a mindfulness um, practice, right? So I just settled into the moment and I was aware of my hands, you know, on the steering wheel. I was aware of, um, you know, the, the temperature in, in the vehicle, you know, surrounding. So whatever it is, just try to take your, your high stress thoughts, bring them down to the present moment. And again, it doesn't have to be a big battle for you. It's like, it's like going to the gym, right? For some people when you say, Hey, uh, you know, meditate twice a day. Well, you know, then I got to commit the time. I got to spend the time. I got to, uh, I can't still my mind out. I have so many things to do and you try to slot it into your day. So gradually start small. It can be very simple that, I mean, you know, it's like putting your gym clothes on, right? Close your eyes. Just close your eyes for a moment, for a moment or two, even for 30 seconds. And it can really make a difference for you throughout the day. Or just have a look into the green when, 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 when you have the possibility to, to watch into the green. Or also, um, when it's difficult uh, to meditate, just go out into the nature when you're allowed to do that or connect yourself with the nature. Have a look at the, at the lake or at the sea or, or, or just, just observe a tree. When I, look, when I have a look outside this, uh, the door, I can see a lot of apples hanging on the apple tree and just to connect them because your mind, the attention follows the, where, you, where you have a look at. And that's it. That's so important. And that calms you down. That gives you more peace. And, and you, will, you feel much more supported. And, and, of course, you will settle down. Yeah. And there's one, one thing, uh, one other thing that I think is so key and important to, to everything is to make sure that you get enough proper restful sleep. You know, I think we are certainly sleep deprived as a society. Uh, you know, people value that, oh, I only slept for four hours last night, right? And we think that's a great thing because we're so, you know, productive and we spent 20 hours working so hard. Well, you know, when you're, when you're, um, in a deep restful sleep, your body is healing and rejuvenating. And so now you can process things much clearer as opposed to feeling exhausted. Um, and that's why our mood sometimes, you know, when people push our buttons and we get, we overreact because we are exhausted and we're tired. So sleep is for me, the number one most important thing that you could ever do for yourself in terms of health um, in, in, for, for um, your physical and emotional well-being. So, my dear Tanya, we are running out of time, mm. but, but, 
I love to talk in one of the next videos about sleep mm. because I think we can share a lot about that topic because that's very, very necessary. And good idea, um, my friend. And I think we will see. We will see. Be prepared to watch one of our next videos. But first of all, thank you so much for joining in today and have a wonderful day. Looking forward to seeing you next time. And remember that you are the architect of your life.